And we welcome you once again to the Mark Turgeon Radio Show. Great to have you with us tonight. Uh, Leo, Leo Turgeon is producing our show, incidentally, this evening, the pride and joy of Holy Redeemer School in Kensington. Doing a great job, too. A great job, Leo. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I, I, I've heard all, you know, I don't really pay attention to a lot of things, um, but I heard that uh, there's probably 90 tickets left for Saturday. Yeah, so. These so. guys, deserve, guys it. deserve it. It's a big-time game, and our players, they deserve a, a crowd like that. And it was a great crowd last night. It I'm was. not sure we could have done it without our crowd last night. I thought they inspired us defensively to, to you know, continue to play hard when things weren't going well offensively. Almost 13,000 at Xfinity Center. Our live guest tonight is brought to you by Capital One Bank. That's the official bank of Maryland Athletics. Evan Smotrich did not start the year like he thought he was going to start. He uh, suffered a broken bone in his foot just before the season opener, missed the first five games, came back and played two games, missed three games, came back and he has played eight games. And I'll never forget the first game you came back. I guess it was against uh, Monmouth, I think. Wasn't yeah. it? And Chris and I looked at each other and said, either he's been under a sun lamp or <laughs> he is just a little out of shape. Yeah, you It know, was tough, wasn't it? When you shut it down for, you know, so many weeks. Yeah. You got to start back from square one. It's definitely not easy, especially, you know, playing against uh, Monmouth was first, and then we played against VMI. I don't know if you remember that was I probably do. the most up tempo game I've ever played in my life. So, um, yeah, it's been tough, you know, just just uh, you know, baby steps getting back into shape. No, no after effects at all with the foot though, because you can tell now you're almost, or maybe you are back to where you should be. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say that. You know, I'm definitely starting to feel a little bit more like myself, but uh, I, I've learned to kind of play through the pain and um, you know, slowly getting my timing back and getting back in the groove. But um, I knew it was going to be a process, so I'm just dealing with it. The coach, a valuable Evan Smotrich, you can't put into words what he means to the basketball team when he's out there on the floor right now. No doubt. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate for Evan that he gets hurt and um, his senior year because he was really in great, probably the best shape of his life and playing at a really high level. And he won't, he won't be 100% this year. Um, now, he'll, he'll be playing really well before the year's over and, and helping us win a lot of games, but he won't be 100%. It'll be, you know, late into the summer before he's 100%. But, you know, funny story, that first time he went in against Mammoth. I was going to only play him like two or three minutes. Well, there wasn't a dead ball. It went on for like six minutes. So we skipped the timeout, yeah. and I wasn't going to call one because I'm stubborn. And Evan was dying. Yeah. I mean, he could barely get across half court. And uh, so I don't know if that's happened since all year. Uh, but uh, we played through a whole timeout, and he couldn't get a rest. But uh, now he's helping us. He really helped us last night, really helped us at Purdue. He didn't shoot the ball well at Purdue, but defensively he was, he was spot on. He was great with his double teams on the post. And really played a smart defensive game at Purdue. Yeah, but every game except two of them, you played at least 20 minutes or more, including last night. You had 20, 22, I think, last night, 22 minutes. Yeah, it's been it's been good. You know, like I said, just a process. Obviously, I haven't been playing like I've I've wanted to, but uh, uh, it's coming. That's you know, that's all I can really say. It's coming slowly you, but surely. You knew what it, was, what it was like to play in the Big Ten when you transferred to Maryland from Michigan. A lot of us don't know what it's like to play against Big Ten opponents on a continual basis. But we're seeing now it's a very physical league, night in, night out. Yeah, refs are definitely letting us play, which is uh, a good thing for us. I think we're a physical team, and obviously Coach, you know, uh, uh, really stresses boxing out and dominating the board. So I think that's helped us in, in that respect. But, um, yeah, a lot of good venues to play in, a lot of good teams, and, uh, you know, we've, we've been playing well. What has impressed you most about your teammates this year? Um, just how, you know, in different spots, you know, certain guys have stepped up. Um, you guys talked about it earlier. We haven't really been clicking uh, on offense like we have the potential to be. And we're still beating teams, really good teams, and we're still putting uh, points on the board. So I think, you know, each night it's, it's been somebody different and coach has been able to go with, you know, who's ever producing on that night. I remember last night there was a, there was a timeout taken, I think. Coach was not happy with the way the defense was playing. And all of a sudden you guys came out of the timeout I think you reeled off about eight or nine consecutive points to take the lead again. But defense has always been the key to Coach Turgeon's teams all down through his coaching years at Wichita State, Texas A&M, Jacksonville, wherever. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, we talked about last night at halftime. We were uh, number one in the Big Ten in opponent field goal percentage. Right. And, um, you know, that, I think that clicked with some guys. You know, we've been really locking down on D and, no matter how poorly we're shooting the ball or, um, you know, if we're not in the flow on offense, as long as we get stops, we're going to find ways to win games. So, um, yeah, defensive, defensively, we've really been locking in, and, uh, you know, we've been winning as a result. 
one thing I know that nobody in this basketball team talks about numbers, talks about streaks. The media loves to do that. Mm -hmm. They love to talk about 16 and 2 and 4 and 1 and so forth. But within your group, you guys only have one focus. That's to be somewhere at the end of the year with some tremendous numbers. Yeah, uh, our, our entire coaching staff, you know, um, begs us not to read into, you know, what everybody's saying. And, um, you know, for the most part, I think uh, we've done a good job of that. Um, no one really picked us to, to do anything this year. So um, we're kind of just trying to play for each other and, you know, remember that, um, you know, despite the fact that, you know, we're winning now and all these people want to be, you know, uh, fans of Maryland and pick us high now that we're, we're still playing for each other. Jump on the bandwagon, exactly. right? Isn't there a certain swagger you see in this team, though, compared to last year? Um, yeah, we try not to talk about last year. but uh, <laughs> Come on, Johnny. <laughs> but, yeah, I think, you know, like I said, guys are just stepping up in, in, in certain spots. And, um, you know, the young guys especially, uh, Jared, um, Dion, Mello, they've, they've all had, you know, different moments where – They've just uh, turned on a swagger. Well, like they can all play, can't they? Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. We're going to take a break. We'll come back with more with Evan Smotrich in just a moment on this, the Mark Turgeon Radio Show on the Terrapin Sports Radio Network. Evan Smotrich is with us. This portion of the Mark Turgeon Radio Show is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. And speaking of going places, your family has gone almost everywhere you've been when you've been playing college basketball, they show up at almost every game. Yeah, I've been pretty fortunate. Uh, you know, they've both uh, been able to get time off work and stuff like that to, to come travel. And this being my senior year, my mom especially is trying to go to all these places, even, you know, as far out as Purdue. And, you know, driving an hour through cornfields from the airport. So, yeah, it's good to, to, to see them in the States. You already got your degree in American Studies. Now you're going after a master's in real estate development. Yes, yeah, uh, probably the first time in my educational career that I am not, you know, bored with the, the subject matter. So um, I, I have no problem going to class, and uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's been good. So you have plenty of time to practice, plenty of time to work on your game, too. Exactly, yeah. Um, night classes, um, so, so uh, I'm able to, to get shots up and get a workout in while the guys are in, uh, doing their class and study hall and stuff. You know, probably one of the best things that happened to us, Coach, is when he decided to transfer down here from Michigan. Six-man award he won with Michigan. Yeah, got him for the Big Ten championship and, and now a chance to lead your team to also hopefully a Big Ten championship here. Yeah, he has some experience and obviously has experience with the league. But, we, you know, we didn't take Evan to think that we were going to be in the Big Ten someday. That wasn't even a part of our conversation. None of us knew it. Um, and maybe a little unfortunate for him. I'm not sure he wanted to go back into the Big Ten, but uh, – he does have a good feel for it, but he's been great for us. You know, he was a great practice player in his, his off year. He had a really good junior year, I thought, for us. And uh, unfortunately for him, he got hurt. But, you know, we're just – there's a lot of basketball to be played. There's a lot of season left, um, you know, two and a half months of basketball hopefully left in our, in our season. So that's a lot of time for Evan to make a huge impact in his senior year. Evan, as, as uh, you go out at the University of Maryland, you can evaluate for us the four freshmen who've come in this year, that each one of these guys has been a valuable part of that 10-man rotation, starting with Melo Tremble. Yeah, I mean, obviously Melo is, you know, just playing out of his mind. And, um, you know, his poise especially, you, you never see him get too high, too low. And I think that's been, been really good for our team uh, to have a young guy like that who can kind of keep an even keel and, uh, you know, kind of right the ship has, has been huge for us. And Jared Nickens, nothing like shooting three-pointers, leads the team in that category with three-pointers made. Got to be the quickest release I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, Jared's probably one of the best shooters I've ever played with or, or watched shoot. Just uh, lights out. And then Deion Wiley, tough kid from Potomac yeah, High Deion, School. Yeah, Deion's definitely going to be a, a really good player. You guys, uh, you guys can see flashes now, but, um, you know, as he you know, gets stronger and stuff like that, he's, he's – definitely going to develop into a really good player and we saw Michael Tchaikovsky last night make a move around the big guy they had went right in for a nice layup he's uh, also showing some flashes uh you know as the seasons went on Checo uh, obviously has a really high ceiling and tons of potential a lot is, of good pieces is there a game that you look back and say this is the one I will never forget playing at the University of Maryland one particular game uh hopefully that game has hasn't been played yet <laughs> Um, you know, Good hopefully, answer. hopefully we're playing deep into March and, uh, and, uh, you know, I can say after, after then that, that, that was one of the games. Now you played against Michigan state earlier. 
You beat them in double overtime there. They haven't lost a game since that game that they, they lost to Maryland. Three consecutive wins. A team that's physical, a team that's very talented. Four guys in double figures against Northwestern. They're loaded. Oh, yeah. The, I've heard that they've been playing, uh, you know, a lot better since we beat them. And um, I'm sure they'll be coming in here fired up to, to get another shot at us. So um, we'll be ready. We'll have, we'll have a good game plan. And, um, hopefully, you know, uh, play a little better offensively than we did at their place. Your folks coming down for this game? Definitely will be here. Yeah, got a couple of people coming. You know, I guess if I could sum it up and ask you about what kind of a year it's been, it's been a fun year. Hey, when you're winning, life <laughs> is good. That's all I got to say. When you're winning, you know, everything, everything is better. So, yeah, it's been fun. And when you're not winning, not fun, right, Coach? It's not fun for them not either, fun. yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's been good. And, and you know, I think we, we, we've been learning while we've been winning. And, um, you know, our guys know that we, we, we – they know we can get a lot better. That's the exciting part. And, uh, you know, individually they can get better. As a team we can get better. So um, – and, and we will. And we will. So uh, – but it's nice to win while you're, while you're going through the process too. And I don't think there's any doubt that life after basketball for Evan Smotrich will be very, very successful, whether he plans to play next year somewhere – or go on the real estate. Yeah, and he'll he'll want to play because all kids do. But sure. I love the I love that he's in graduate school and what he's in. It's exciting. I've had some other former players of mine that have gotten into that area of work and they're very successful. And Evan will be too. Evan, thank you, buddy. Good luck Saturday. Appreciate that, guys. Thanks. You bet. Right, thank Evan. you, Evan Smart.